Chloe. I can't believe that you didn't come today. These gatherings we have with all the moms in the neighborhood are a lot of fun. You told us that you'd definitely be able to come today. Why can't you keep even a simple promise like that? I'm really sorry about that. I don't think that I'll be able to attend these gatherings very often in the future either. What? Well, why not? I'm very grateful that I get invited, but I told you before that I work full-time so it's a bit difficult. You usually have these gatherings and lunches during the day when I'm working, so it's almost impossible for me to go. I really need to work this job as we've been struggling financially recently. I hope that you can understand the situation I'm in. What kind of excuse is that? Are you looking down on all of us moms just because you have a job? No, I'm really not. I didn't think you were that kind of person. You're the arrogant type that thinks you're better than us housewives just because you have a full-time job. I'm so disappointed. I told you it's not like that. But if you're going to talk to me like this, I'm completely fine with being left out of this group completely. Are you for real? I cannot believe this. Just because our children go to the same school, it doesn't mean that all the moms have to be good friends. My family is more important to me, and I have to work full-time to support them properly. What is wrong with you? I'm going out of my way to invite you to these gatherings. You should be thanking me. Stop being so arrogant. I am going to be very busy with my job and all the housework for the next few months anyway. Even if you invite me, I won't be able to go. I've got to get going, goodbye. The next day. Hello, Chloe. I heard that your dad owns a high class restaurant. I have a great suggestion. Let's have our next gathering at your father's restaurant. I'll invite all the other moms. You can make up for missing all the previous gatherings by hosting us at your father's restaurant. Even though you're a little arrogant and flaky, I'm sure you would be more than happy to attend if we're helping out your father's restaurant. I think it's such a great idea. I've already made a reservation with the restaurant so you don't have to worry about that. I thought that you would try to talk us out of it if we let you handle the reservation, huh? Oh, by the way, the reservation is for tonight. I've reserved the entire restaurant so we can have a nice party. I've told everyone to come at around 6 p.m. Make sure that you attend for once and try to socialize with us all. Also, you're going to be paying for all this, okay? It's your father's restaurant after all. More moments later. What's wrong with you? It's past six and you still haven't arrived. Are you really planning to not come again? Some of the other moms actually wanted to see you for once. We even arranged this party so that it starts after you're done with work. On top of that, we decided to have it at your father's restaurant where it would be easy for you to attend. How could you do this to us? It's really starting to feel like you think you're too good to spend time with us. You do know that all of our children go to the same school as your child? You know what that means, right? We're probably going to know each other for a long time. Hurry up and attend so that we can all have a good time. Of course, we're all planning to enjoy ourselves whether you come or not. We're all planning to order the most expensive full-course dinner. I think the main dish today is a ribeye steak and lobster. This is going to be such a wonderful dinner party. One hour later. Chloe, are you really not coming? There's around 50 of us here now. None of us can believe how delicious the food is. We just had the entree. The lobster and steak were both fantastic. There's not going to be any left at this rate. I don't know what's taking you so long, but you better hurry up and come soon. I can't believe that you're making us wait this long. Oh, gotta go. It looks like the desserts are arriving. A few moments later. Chloe. You're still not here? What the hell is wrong with you? 
I can't believe that you're just ignoring all my texts. How about having some respect and at least reading them? Well, I'm going to tell the restaurant that you're taking care of the entire bill like we agreed to. It's your father's restaurant after all. Well, I'm completely full now. Maybe you'll just have one more drink before calling in a night. More moments later. Erm. Um, what are all these texts you've sent me? Oh, hey, Chloe. I was just about to text you, actually. Would you please talk to your father about this, please? What are you talking about? We agreed that you'd be paying the entire bill for this dinner party, right? The waiter keeps telling me I need to pay. Like I have 6,800 on me. He's being ridiculous. Could you ask your father to explain to him that we don't have to pay it? What? 6,800? How the hell did you spend that much? I mean, it's not that surprising, is it? I told you I was inviting 50 people. And some of them brought their families. All that steak and lobster really adds up. You invited 50 people? Yeah, it was really fun with so many people. I made some new friends as well. That's no longer just a small gathering between local moms. Why didn't you tell your father about any of this? Even if you weren't planning on coming to the party, you should have at least explained to your father that you agreed to pay for everything. It's kind of embarrassing having to argue with the staff about the bill. I keep telling the waitress that the owner's daughter is going to pay for this all. But she keeps on saying that the owner doesn't have a daughter. She says he only has a son. Could you calm down and just give me a minute? I still haven't read any of the texts that you sent me. You'll have to scroll through them to figure out what's happening. Wait, what? You still haven't read any of my text messages? What were you doing? I had my phone turned off as I was on a flight. I only just turned my phone back on so I have no idea what you're talking about. You were on a flight? What for? A few moments later. Ella. I just finished reading through all the texts that you sent me. Good. So you finally understand what's going on then. Would you hurry up and contact your father? So this restaurant that you guys are at. Is it the one that's a few minutes walk from the school? Yeah, that's the one. Your father owns that restaurant, right? Would you please hurry up and explain the situation to him so we can get this taken care of? Actually, my father doesn't own that restaurant. My ex-husband's father owns that place. What did you just say? Your ex-husband? Yeah. I'm not related to him at all. What? I didn't know you were divorced. When did that happen? I got divorced around half a year ago. Didn't I tell you about it? I don't really remember. That's one of the reasons I have to work right now, and that's also why I haven't been able to attend any of the recent gatherings. Well, I must have missed that conversation. Well, I don't care who owns the restaurant. Could you please contact your ex-father-in-law and tell him that you're going to be paying the bill? Why would I do that? Pay it yourselves. I thought we agreed that you'd be paying for this party to make up for not attending the previous gatherings. I just told you that I hadn't read any of your texts because I was on a flight. I didn't agree that I'd pay for any of it. This is not my responsibility. It's your fault for not checking your text messages. You do know that you're not allowed to use your phone on a flight, right? What? Really? Even after arriving at my destination, I had lots of work to do so I couldn't check my phone at all. I only just managed to check my text messages after I finished work. It should have been completely obvious that I hadn't agreed to any of that considering I hadn't even read the messages. You even commented on how I hadn't read them so you can't even pretend that I agreed. Wait, hold on. If you are on flight, does that mean you're in another country right now? 
Yeah, I'm in Taiwan right now for work. Is there anything wrong with that? No, of course not. I'm just surprised. Anyway, it doesn't really matter where I am. One of the reasons that I got divorced was because I really didn't get along with my ex-husband's parents. There's no way that I'm going to contact them for a stupid reason like this. Then who is going to be paying the 6,800 bill? Why don't you pay for it? You're the one who ordered it after all. Do you really think I have enough money to pay for this all? Well then why don't you split it evenly between all the guests? I already told everyone that the dinner was your treat. How could I ask them to pay after we've finished eating? That would be so embarrassing. Besides, all the guests have gone home already, so I couldn't ask them even if I wanted to. Well, that's unfortunate. Either way I don't care. None of this is my fault. What? You're just going to leave me in this situation? I have an important presentation at work tomorrow. I want to get some sleep. I'm not going to reply anymore, so don't bother sending me any more text messages. Hold on. Don't just leave me. What am I supposed to do about this? Several days later. I can't believe all of this happened to me. All my friends that came to the dinner party are making fun of me and they all decided to cut ties with me. This is all your fault, Chloe. I'm glad my husband is so rich though. He paid the entire bill for me when I asked for his help. I'm going to ask you to pay me back the 6800 as all this is your fault. Ella, I think that there are other things you need to be worried about. What are you talking about? My father is telling me that your husband is fired. What do you mean? Are you talking about your real father this time? Yes, I'm talking about my father. Why have you suddenly started talking about your father? He has nothing to do with this conversation. Ella, your husband works at Fable, right? The large tech company in the west part of town? Why do you know about that? I know about it because I'm currently working for Fable and my father is the owner of the company. You mean your father doesn't own a restaurant? He owns Fable? That's right. And I want you to listen to what I have to say with that in mind. The 6800 that your husband used to pay for your dinner party, do you know where he got the money from? He told me that it was some savings that he had from when he was still single. I guess he hasn't told you the truth. What do you mean? Well, my father gave me permission, so I'll tell you the entire story. You're sure you have no idea where your husband got that money from? I don't get it. I just told you that he said the money was from his savings. It looks like your husband actually tried to use our company's funds to pay for your stupid dinner party. What? Are you sure? Ella, I think that even you understand that this is not acceptable. We also realized that this might not be the first time that your husband has used company funds for private matters. Our finance department contacted him immediately, and he admitted that he had committed similar crimes in the past. I cannot believe any of this. He tried to fake 6800 as expenses needed for the company renovations. Unfortunately for him, large sums of money like that are always double-checked. Everyone is pretty shocked at what your husband has done. It took us all by surprise. So that's why you were telling me that my husband was fired? It's not been 100 confirmed yet as the company still has to gather all the evidence. However this is a crime and it won't go by unpunished. I'd say it would be getting off lightly if getting fired is all that happens to him. Further punishment may be needed depending on the rest of the evidence. This can't be happening to me. This could end up really badly for me and my family. What should I do about this? Don't ask me. How should I know? This all happened because of you. Stop blaming the problems that you caused on me. You should be taking responsibility for what you did. What did you just say to me? 
I had already told you why I couldn't attend all the gatherings that you guys plan all the time. You got annoyed for some reason and decided to host a dinner party at a high-end restaurant and pass off the bill to me. I didn't agree to any of it but you pressed right on. I hadn't even read your text messages. In the end, your husband committed a crime to try and pay for your dinner party with our company's money. How is any of that my fault? If you still think it's my fault, could you please explain to me which part of it is because of me? Well, it's because you wouldn't come to any of the gatherings even when I invited you. How many times do I have to tell you? I told you that I couldn't go and I explained the reason for my absence every single time. But that's still your fault. It seems like we're just repeating the same conversation. I'm getting tired of it so I'm going to stop replying soon. You can't do that. You need to help me. I'm going to be really busy from today. My company has lots of work to do to prevent anyone else from committing fraud like your husband. So you're telling me that you're just going to ignore me? How rude. I'm telling you that I don't have the time to waste on someone like you. What do you mean, someone like me? What did you just say to me? I've got to go now. Goodbye. After gathering all the evidence of money being stolen or used for personal matters, the company demanded Ella's husband to repay everything. Unable to pay the money, Ella and her husband sought help from their parents. Somehow, they managed to resolve the issue, but shortly after, Ella and her husband divorced. With her ex-husband burdened with debt and unable to find employment due to his actions, Ella found herself unable to support her children. Her sister agreed to take care of them on the condition that Ella stayed away. Around ten years ago, Ella's parents and sister had severed ties with her due to issues with her attitude and personality. With no family left, Ella felt incredibly alone. Having nowhere else to go, Ella still resides in this area, living in a small apartment. She struggles to make ends meet by working part-time, but her neighbors don't particularly like her. I occasionally see her around town, but she always avoids me. It seems like her days of indulging in expensive dinners are long gone. 